Yeah, it, it just, you know, the, it, it's like... Big Thing David is like this new world. It opens up this whole new world of making thing. And I, I love to make crazy things. That's why I love being involved in theater, because it's the, the place where they just want something weird. You know? <laughs> they want doors that open and close, but appear to be unsupported. They want, you know, things to fly across the sky. They, they you know, they're always wanting effects. This is, this is a dragon that's going to be for the Yarmouth High School theater group. It's got to be manipulated by a, um, it's got to be manipulated by a, a couple of students. If you look at, this is the torso. Okay, if you'll notice that torso, the, the backpack frame will hold that torso so that the head level is about level with my chin. Okay, and the fellow in here will be in costume. Um, you know, his arms and his legs will be the dragon's arms and legs. And the tail will be about 10 feet long. And then there's another at least two feet of neck and a head. The mouth has to open and close. The tail has to wag. And it'll have wings on it, these large, lightweight wings, which will also function. It'll be the, the fellow inside, through arm movement, is going to be operating the wings so that the wings can flap or you can hold them in an extended outward position if he wants. Through it all, there needs to be a three inch flexible hose that goes all the way up to the mouth of the dragon so that the, the um, smoke can come out of the dragon's mouth. I was inspired by the challenge of making something that on stage would seem alive. And, and the in, to me, the exciting thing was that insight into how to think about it. You know, you think about it functionally and anatomically and then the f you can make any form you want. I mean, anything, you can make anything. You can make a horse, you can make, you know, a mastodon, you can make uh, uh, any living thing if you uh, can kind of think anatomically and work from that standpoint. In the models that I made, it looked really easy. This is, this is first generation model. I just use some scrap tubing and so on. Well, it seems to flex, it holds together, it doesn't kink very much. It's just rubber bands inside those tubes. Um, my next generation model is a larger scale. And I use a lot, I use the center uh, post with these bands on it, which works pretty well in the model, but I haven't been able to reproduce it very well in full scale. So that's going to be my big, my big challenge because the neck also has to flex. There'll be an operator, an exterior operator, have a pole that'll attach to the head. If you imagine the dragon's head here, he's going to have to be able to do all kinds of maneuvers with that. With a cable attachment, he'll be able to make the dragon's, you know, mouth open and close. Um, and so that's kind of a challenge. Um, I mean, they're just things. They're just wood and, you know, <laughs> twine and glue and flexible pipe and bungee cords. I mean, you know, it's just stuff. But you're trying to make it so it can become alive. Not in and of itself, but with the, ac you know, the actors, the puppeteers will, will really bring this thing to life. You know, if I can give them what they need so that they, they have something to work with. And that's incredibly exciting. It's the most exciting project I've ever had. It really is, you know, <laughs> and I've had some pretty cool stuff, you know. <laughs>
360 axis for costuming. Uh -huh. The way I envision is the costume has to somehow be unwrappable so they can get in because he's got everything that's got to be tightened up. And so some exterior access, I think, will make life for everyone much easier. I mean, okay. It's so long, it's longer than the And of course, this, there's no, in terms of the body, there's no articulation. Right. So it's only a matter of putting it on in a way that, you know, you like. Mm -hmm. And we do have extra laths if you know, you feel you need more structure and stuff. Let's, let's do this first before we do that, because then I want to pull okay. some tension in that. Okay. Got it. Is this, this where, which, the next? Mm-hmm. I wonder if there's an argument for me putting my glasses on so I could see what I was doing. Well, what do you think? Any your opinions thumb. on that? <laughs> <laughs> I did some uh, puppets for the Little Shop of Horrors. That one started with the exterior form in terms of the build of it. You know, you didn't have to really think anatomically. Hot glue, I feel like a surgeon. This one is, it's total about anatomy. The form has to flow over the anatomy. And that's both the thing that makes it possible to do something like this, but it's also really challenging because the body is a marvelous instrument. You know, you've got all these tendons and ligaments in your spinal cord and your spinal column. And to reproduce something in, in a, a dragon's tail or a snake or anything with a long, flexible tail on it, that they can maneuver through muscular action. And there's just an incredible number of interacting pieces. And you're not going to reproduce them all, but you have to reproduce enough to make it come alive. You need to be very careful, I think, not to put over tension on this right. side. Right. We did it pretty loose compared to the tail. Yeah, That's, okay. We can okay. go even less than that. Well, really, in terms of articulation and expression, I think the neck is probably one of the most key things. Yeah. It has to be able to not just twist, but also, you know, have a more fluid action to it. His expression has to do with that, with the neck and head, really. I mean, yeah, the wings move, but they're not expressive in the same way. Buy those plastic ones. Is that platform going to be in your way? Um, yeah, I think we need to get it off stage. Every time you put this together, it gets more and more complex. I'm just going to get a clamp up high. What's so crazy about this? It's this. I have to deal with that, don't I? total dragon from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail is probably going to be 20 feet. And I estimate the whole thing will weigh about 20 pounds. So it's pretty simple in one sense, but it's pretty complex in another. <laughs> Tough job, but we can do it. Oh, there we go. We're going to have a better action now. I knew it was probably going to be some trial and error to get it to work the way I want it to work. You know, it has so much that it, I want it to be able to do. Um, but you know, you're limited by the mechanics of reality too. I do run into a problem down as I approach the tail because I've got to fit a, a um, hose through here. So I'll have to, I'll have to work up a different kind of attachment from here on out. Betsy, you'll see, she gets phenomenal acting out of high school students. How about me, Dragon? I mean, 
She's no. amazing what she gets out of him. It's really hard to imagine that she can, how extraordinary she is in getting those performances out of, out of the students. I mean, truly extraordinary. The guys who designed War Horse said a wonderful thing, which, which is, was really inspirational. They say an actor struggles to die on the stage. A puppet has to struggle to become alive. And that's, um, and that's really the challenge here. You know, I mean, that's the excitement of it too. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to do.